each and every one of you today. All right, Numbers chapter 3. All right, and as I stated, if you just read it, it's going to work like Simon X. It's going to put you to sleep. But if you go into it and you look at it and kind of try to understand how it relates to other aspects of the Scripture and other aspects of the Bible, it's very, very enlightening. And uh, we're going to try to do that. Um, it is rather long, but I think we're going to get to it because it's, even though it's long, it's a lot of repetitive aspects to it. And so we'll be able just to kind of um, categorize those and talk about it and then move on to the next uh, repetitive aspect. All right, so let's go ahead and get the reading in. Um, let's take a listen. Numbers chapter 3. Chapter 3. These also are the generations of Aaron and Moses in the day that the Lord spake with Moses in Mount Sinai. And these are the names of the sons of Aaron, Nadab the firstborn, and Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. These are the names of the sons of Aaron, the priests, which were anointed, whom he consecrated to minister in the priest's office. And Nadab and Abihu died before the Lord when they offered strange fire before the Lord in the wilderness of Sinai. And they had no children. And Eleazar and Ithamar ministered in the priest's office in the sight of Aaron, their father. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Bring the tribe of Levi near, and present them before Aaron the priest, that they may minister unto him. And they shall keep his charge and the charge of the whole congregation before the tabernacle of the congregation to do the service of the tabernacle. And they shall keep all the instruments of the tabernacle of the congregation and the charge of the children of Israel to do the service of the tabernacle. And thou shalt give the Levites unto Aaron and to his sons. They are wholly given unto him out of the children of Israel. And thou shalt appoint Aaron and his sons, and they shall wait on their priest's office. And the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, And I, behold, I have taken the Levites from among the children of Israel, instead of all the firstborn that openeth the matrix among the children of Israel, Therefore the Levites shall be mine, because all the firstborn are mine. For on the day that I smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, I hallowed unto me all the firstborn in Israel, both man and beast. Mine shall they be, I am the Lord. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, saying, Number the children of Levi after the house of their fathers by their families. Every male from a month old and upward shalt thou number them. Moses numbered them according to the word of the Lord, as he was commanded. And these were the sons of Levi by their names, Gershon, and Kohath, and Miralai. And these are the names of the sons of Gershon by their families, Libni, and Shimei. And the sons of Kohath by their families, Amram, and Izehar, Hebron, and Uziel. And the sons of Merari by their families, Malai, and Mushai, these are the families of the Levites according to the house of their fathers. Of Gershon was the family of the Libnites, and the family of the Shemites. These are the families of the Gershonites. Those that were numbered of them according to the number of all the males, from a month old and upward, even those that were numbered of them were seven thousand and five hundred. The families of the Gershonites shall pitch behind the tabernacle westward. And the chief of the house of the father of the Gershonites shall be Eliasaph, the son of Leel, and the charge of the sons of Gershon in the tabernacle of the congregation shall be the tabernacle and the tent, the covering thereof, and the hanging for the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the hangings of the court, and the curtain for the door of the court which is by the tabernacle, and by the altar round about, and the cords of it for all the service thereof. And of Kohath was the family of Amramites, and the family of Isiharites, and the family of the Hebronites, and the family of Uzielites. These are the families of the Kohathites. In the number of all the males, from a month old and upward, were 8,600, keeping the charge of the sanctuary. The families of the sons of Kohath shall pitch on the side of the tabernacle southward. And the chief of the house of the father of the families of the Kohathites shall be Elizaphan, and the son of Uziel. And their charge shall be the ark, and the table, and the candlestick, and the altars, and the vessels of the sanctuary, wherewith they minister, and the hanging, and all the service thereof. And Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, shall be chief over the chief of the Levites, and have the oversight of them that keep the charge of the sanctuary. 
of Merari was the family of Merlites, and the family of Mushites. These are the families of Merari. And those that were numbered of them, according to the number of all the males, from a month old and upward, were 6,200. And the chief of the house of the father of the families of Merari was Zurahel, the son of Abihel. These shall pitch on the side of the tabernacle northward. And under the custody and charge of the sons of Merari shall be the boards of the tabernacle, and the bars thereof, and the pillars thereof, and the sockets thereof, and all the vessels thereof, and all that serveth thereto, and the pillars of the court round about, and their sockets, and their pins, and their cords. But those that encamp before the tabernacle toward the east, even before the tabernacle of the congregation eastward, shall be Moses and Aaron and his sons, keeping the charge of the sanctuary for the charge of the children of Israel. And the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. All that were numbered of the Levites, which Moses and Aaron numbered at the commandment of the Lord, Throughout their families, all the males, from a month old and upward, were twenty and two thousand. And the Lord said unto Moses, Number all the firstborn of the males of the children of Israel, from a month old and upward, and take the number of their names. And thou shalt take the Levites for me, I am the Lord, instead of all the firstborn among the children of Israel. And the cattle of the Levites, instead of all the firstlings among the cattle of the children of Israel. And Moses numbered, as the Lord commanded him, all the firstborn among the children of Israel, and all the firstborn males by the number of names, from a month old and upward, of those that were numbered of them, were twenty and two thousand two hundred and threescore and thirteen. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the Levites instead of all the firstborn among the children of Israel, and the cattle of the Levites instead of their cattle, and the Levites shall be mine. I am the Lord. And for those that are to be redeemed of the two hundred and threescore and thirteen of the firstborn of the children of Israel, which are more than the Levites, thou shalt even take five shekels apiece by the bull, after the shekel of the sanctuary shalt thou take them. The shekel is twenty geahs. And thou shalt give the money wherewith the odd number of them is to be redeemed unto Aaron and to his sons. And Moses took the redemption money of them that were over and above them that were redeemed by the Levites. Of the firstborn of the children of Israel took he the money, a thousand three hundred and threescore and five shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary. And Moses gave the money of them that were redeemed unto Aaron and to his sons, according to the word of the Lord, as the Lord commanded Moses. All right, here we go. All right, so we're looking once again at this whole numbering thing, this 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 math and counting, uh, uh, and and numbering. And what, one of the things we have to keep in mind is that this is something that is structural and necessary and 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 needed. And we're gonna we will see this in other places. We'll actually touch on this a little bit today. We'll probably look at a couple of other places where some numbering is taking place. Some of it is good. Some of it is bad, and some of it is, you know, depending on your circumstances as to whether that number is going to be something that's positive or something that's certainly detrimental. Um, but we start off once again, we look at this chapter, and it says, These also are the generations of Aaron and Moses in the day that the Lord spake unto Moses in Mount Sinai. Now, What's important here is that we are still at the what? At the mountain of Sinai. And what does that represent? It represents the, 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 the law, the lesson of legality. We're still getting the information of how to uh, uh, compose and to, and to do legally uh, and properly. What's, you know, you're thinking, well, why are they spending so much time here? It's because what is going to be done is has to be done precise, accurately, and the way it was designed to happen. Now, what does that reflect on? To me, it reflects on Jesus. Jesus said that he's going to do everything that was written in the law. He said not one jot nor one tittle will be omitted. He said heaven and earth would pass away before anything in the word would not be fulfilled. So when we look at this repetitive and all of this stuff where it's look, it looks like they're just saying the same thing, one thing after another, after another, and it's like it's just, you know, why keep repeating this? It's because each detail is important. 
The things that we forget is that God is, is I mean, immensely accurate on the details. One scripture comes to mind is that the Lord says that he knows the, he knows the number of hairs on our head. And that reflects to not just that he knows how many, but he knows which one is which number. All right. And so it speaks a lot to the detail of what God has. So when we like, when we think about that and then we look at what God is revealing unto us, he's just giving us what we can handle from the details. There is so much more details that he probably just, like, you know, I'm not going to give you all that because you don't understand how, you know, precise things uh, need to be and what they have to be. But I will give you a glimpse of the detail and the fine accuracy that has to happen for redemption to be uh, applied. Um. We're going into here. Let's let's let me just look at a few things here. I want to point out something about these Levites, but let me read a few more uh, verses here. Verse two says, "And these are the names of the sons of Aaron: Nadab the firstborn, and Abihu, and Esalmar, and 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 uh, uh, Eleazar rather, and Ethamar." And verse three it says, "These are the names of the sons of Aaron, the priests which were anointed, consecrated to minister." In the priest's office. All right. So what that means is that they're the ones that are going to oversee and orchestrate the sacrifices. They're going to receive the offerings from the people. And they're going to uh, go through the proper rituals and apply the proper sacrifice. Which we went through in the book of uh, uh, Leviticus and in Deuteronomy. I'm sorry, uh, in Exodus. In Exodus and Leviticus, we went through some of those sacrifices. Uh, that were ordained and orchestrated by God to do. So the priests had to be educated. Now, you know, like Wayne was talking earlier before we started, was that, you know, you had to go into a class at a certain point and you had to be educated. Well, it's important to be educated and to know how to do, but at, certain, at, some, at some point you actually have to be able to do what? To do the work. And that's what the, the, the uh, information that is laid out here is for. These priests have to do the work. Now, what happens if you are a welder and you welding by a propane tank? You're going to blow yourself up if you don't know what you're doing. All right? So if you do things incorrectly, you're going to have a problem. That's why you need to know the instructions, and then you got to be able to do it properly. Well, let's look at verse 4. Has that ever happened amongst this whole aspect of the priest from the instructions that God has given? Let's take a look. And Nadab and Abihu died before the Lord when they offered strange fire before the Lord in the wilderness of Sinai. All right. So they went ahead and, and said, I think I know what I'm doing. I know how to offer up. I know how to cut up an animal and put it on a fire. I know how to do it. They just did it any kind, you know, the way they felt like doing it. We're just going to have a Friday, you know, fish fry. We're going to fry over and do what we want to do. No, you're not. Not with the things of God. See, there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. You can't do it your way. You need to know how it's supposed to be done. Now, the key is we don't know all the details. We just know some of the things that were revealed, and even the things that were revealed to a certain degree, we still don't have all the hows and the why and the how comes. We just know, oh, he said do this. Right? But there's an aspect to it that may be slightly different. And you say, well, what, what do you mean slightly different? Well, what are we talking about here? God told Moses to number the people. Right? All right. So that's just numbering folks. So is there any wrong in how you number them? Yes, there is. I'm not going to turn to it now, but if you were to go to um, 1 Chronicles chapter 21, you'll see another numbering that took place. But this numbering was not taking place by God. And that first chapter and that first verse, it says, And Satan stood up against Israel to and provoked David to number Israel. And David went out and began to number Israel. 
And he was numbering them for a different reason. See, God was numbering them for his purpose. David was numbering them under the instructions of, of Satan in order to get a confidence of his strength. I want to find out how many you know, warriors and, 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 and fighters I have so I know how strong I am. Well, the number of people that you have when you're following the Lord has nothing to do with your strength. Where does your strength lie? Your strength lies in the Lord. So you and the Lord versus a host are still the majority. You're still the power. So the same concept, David went and numbered the people, just like Moses was told to go number the people. The difference is God told Moses and Aaron to number them for a purpose in which God was trying to bring forth. Satan told David to number for a purpose that he wanted to do. So same action. One is sinful and one is obedience. So you can do First this. Chronicles. Go ahead. First Chronicles. First Chronicles what? First Chronicles chapter 21. You can also see it in, um, uh, it's also uh, parallel in Second Samuel chapter 24. So if you can read that and you'll see that those whole, those numbering. But as we go through this and we see this, this, the Lord telling, you know, them to number and to count and to do all that. Well, he's doing it for his purpose. And it's supposed to only be done for his purpose. And we're going to um, uh, 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 bring that up a little bit more. But as you can see in verse 4, Nadab and Abihu, they went and did it their own way. And they, they got removed from the scene. The Lord took them, took them out. All right. Uh, um, and so that left only uh, uh, Eliezer and Ithamar to minister in the priest's office in the sight of Aaron under their father. All right. So look at verse five. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, OK, the difference here. First Chronicle 21, Satan said to David and numbers uh, uh, three here. It says the Lord spake unto Moses. See, it has to come from God. You can't do it your way. And that's an important aspect. This is why Jesus was so adamant in, I did not come to do my will, but the will of what? Of my Father, which sent me. Why? Because he was, he was laying out and applying all that was written in Scripture. Stuff that we see and understand, stuff that we see and don't get, and plus stuff that we don't even get. There's some things that uh, we don't even have the ability to comprehend. Jesus told his disciples, there are many things I want to tell you, but you're not what? Ready to receive them. And there's so many things that God has done and is doing in our life that we try to want to understand. And God will probably just look at us and go, you're not ready to understand why I'm allowing this to happen. And they kept trying to figure out, well, when is the kingdom going to come? Are you going to now set up the kingdom after his resurrection? And he said, it, it is not for you to know the day or the hour. But it's for my heavenly father. All right. So uh, in verse 6, uh, we can see that uh, what the Lord told Moses, he said, bring the tribe of Levi near and present them before Aaron, the priest, that they may minister unto me. All right. Who are, who are we bringing forth? The entire tribe of Levi. Now, you remember in the last couple of chapters, we were counting and numbering people, but we weren't really including the tribe of the Levi. Well, this is the Levites chapter here. Now we're going to look at them. A lot of counting and numbering about them. And we're bringing them. Well, if we go back to Leviticus and, and, and Exodus, we see that the Levites had a special thing going on. Remember that the Levites had to have special what? Clothes. They had to be covered with a proper garment. They had to have the right linen garment. They had to have the, the, the variety of different accessories that were supposed to have. So they had to be properly attired. Plus, the Levites were people that could not just decide, I want to be a Levite. The Levites were people that were born Levites. So what does that speak of? It speaks that you got to be born and you have to be clothed. All right? So both of those things are important. 
if you're not born again, you're not part of the priesthood. And if you're not clothed, you're not going to be counted as legitimate in the priesthood. Um, you can look at, I won't go to it now, but you can look at uh, Matthew chapter 22, where Jesus told the parable of the king that, that, that had the banquet. And he invited all these people and different ones didn't want to come. So finally he said, go into the hedges and the highways and, and compel them to come. And then, you know, they, they filled the house. But then it says in that third, no, not the third, in that 11th verse, it says, but when the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man there who did not have on a wedding garment. And he says, and so he said unto him, friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? And the, the, the scripture says that the man was speechless. Why? Because you don't have an answer against the things of God when you know what you're supposed to do. So if you're not clothed properly, you can't actually be in the presence of the Lord without the proper clothing. We're going to talk about that clothing in just a bit. But then it goes on and says, And then the king said unto his servants, Bind him hand and foot, Take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. And that's kind of a, an overview of uh, Matthew chapter 22, right around the 11th verse. And so that whole concept of not being close, you're in the right place, you're where you're supposed to be, but you don't have on the right what? Garment. Now, there's a lot of people that will sit and be, be around the Bible, be around godly people, but they don't have on the righteousness of Christ. They're still going to be lost. I could have also talked about the, 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 the ten virgins, how five were what? Wise and five were foolish. So if you don't have the proper attire, and the attire that we need is the righteousness of Christ. If you don't have that on, it don't matter how nice of a person you are. There's some really, really nice people that don't believe in Jesus. And they don't believe in eternity. And they're good people. They're, they, will, they will go to bat for you. They will help you out. They are sweet, nice, kind, and polite. But they don't want nothing to do with Jesus. So they're in the right place, but they're not clothed. Right? They're where they're supposed to be. They're doing good. They're, they're treating their neighbor nice. But they're not putting on the clothes. You don't have on the righteousness of Christ. And that's the identification of the Levites. The Levites are different because they got a different set of garments that they're supposed to put on. The scripture tells us because of what Jesus did, we are now a royal priesthood. But we're only a royal priesthood if we're clothed with the proper garments. All right. So it says that uh, in, in verse 6, it says, bring the tribe of Levi near and the priests. All right. So he's bringing the tribe and he says in uh, and, and verse 7, and they shall keep his charge. So you're going to have things to do. So not only are you born, you got to be born again. Marvel out, I say unto you, you must be born again. And you got to have his righteousness. Okay. Then you're going to have a charge. God's going to give you something to do. All right? So he says he's going to, he, he gave them charge over the whole congregation before the tabernacle of the congregation to do the service of the tabernacle. All right? And so where is it, what does the tabernacle represent? The tabernacle represents the place where God comes and dwells with you, where God will speak to you. Well, in Moses' day, that tabernacle was a tabernacle that was portable and had a variety of different uh, articles and things in it. Today, because of what Jesus did, the tabernacle is where? In you. You are the tabernacle of God. You are the structure of God. God was in the tabernacle of Moses, and he would speak to the people from the tabernacle. God can now speak to you in the tabernacle in your own heart, soul, and spirit. That's why you need to get to know him. How? For yourself, personally. Invite him in. He says, behold, I'm at the door and I knock. If any man let me in, I will come in and I will sup with him. That's an important aspect of it as well. All right, look at verse 8. 
and they shall keep all the instruments of the tabernacle. Oh, so there are little things that you have to maintain and, and watch over. Yes, there are. All right. So how? Um, love thy neighbor. Only worship the Lord God. Uh, do good unto them. Pray for them to despitefully use you. All, right. All these are part of the instruments that we're supposed to bring forth. Somebody uh, uh, tries to attack you to say, carry my stuff for, for a mile. You say, I'll carry it two miles. Smack you on one face, side of the face, you turn to them the other side. All of these are instruments that we got to learn how to use and apply in our daily walk. Love the Lord thy God with all our heart, mind, soul, and, and spirit. Those are what we need to do. Look at verse um, 9. It says, And thou shalt give the Levites unto Aaron and to his sons. They are wholly given unto him out of the children of Israel. All right? So the Levites are the priests. From all the Israelites, the Levites are the ones that are wholly given to the Lord. Well, bring it to our day. Those that have believed in Jesus are the ones that are wholly given unto the Lord. All right. Look at verse 10. And thou shalt appoint Aaron and his sons, and they shall wait on their priest's office. All right. So what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to wait and allow God to instruct you. I'm going to go do what I want to do. No, you need to find out what the Lord wants you to do. All right. So you wait. How long should I wait? I, I, some, I don't know. That's my answer. It varies. Some might wait two days. Some might wait two decades. You know, I don't know. All right. It says, and the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. Now, what does that mean? The stranger, a person that doesn't meet the criteria. What did I just read in Matthew 22? The guy was there. He was at the right place. He was at the banquet, but he wasn't clothed. So that makes him a what? A stranger. Okay? But then, what it doesn't say, but is very obvious, everybody else that wasn't at the banquet, that didn't have the clothes, and didn't even go to the banquet, they are lost too. So in order to be, you have to be at the banquet and clothed. In other words, you got to be where the Lord is, and have his righteousness. All right? Those are the requirements. Look at verse 11. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, And I behold, and I have taken the Levites from among the children of Israel instead of all the firstborn. So the Lord said, I paid for the firstborn. Now that speaks about his redemption aspect. The firstborn of Israel, the firstborn of Egypt died, but the firstborn in Israel of the Israelites were spared as long as they were under the what? Under the blood. And so he said that um, uh, the children of Israel, instead of all the firstborn that open up the matrix, everyone that is born among the children of Israel, therefore the Levites shall be mine. All right, so there's a lot of people born on earth. There's a lot of people walking around. But only those that are born again belong to God. Jesus told Nicodemus, Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. If you're not born again, you're just religious. If you're not born again, you just, you know, have philosophy and, 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 spiritual, and spirituality. You need Jesus. All right, so you got to be born again. All right, that's an important thing about our walk with the Lord. Yes, sir. Uh, um, you're talking about the Levites, and is this is where some people are getting that the Levites are the children of God, and no one else is. Is this where they're pulling this from? Some people try to try to uh, 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 espouse that that uh, there are certain people that are considered uh, uh, Levitical even today. And um, they don't really um, say again. My mine's froze, so I didn't hear what you had said. Oh, okay, um, there are some people that take the philosophy that you have to have a heritage or a genealogy, um, and be and be uh, you know legally born a Levite to be able to have some type of uh, 
a connection with God. And some people uh, assign that to them as a group. So you got, you know, people like these five percenters and some of these other uh, people that have this philosophy. Um, I, to I totally disagree with that. I think it's a natural aspect that we are reading now. However, it is applied to us spiritually. All right. So we become the priesthood of God. We are a royal priesthood. We are chosen. And that's only because of our ability to come to Christ and accept him. And then he what? He changes us. That's why the concept of born again, and Nicodemus got it all confused. Well, how do I go back into my mother's womb? And Jesus said, I'm not talking about that kind of birth. You got to be born of the spirit. All right? So you, and that's the birth that we have to have. And that's how you become the eternal and the, and, and the uh, uh, spiritual uh, 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 Levite or, or server of God. All right, where God will work with you and you can work with him. And we know that's real because when Jesus died, this whole aspect that we're reading about here was completely fulfilled and made no more uh, uh, of a necessity. How do we know that? Because the whole structure, the veil at Jesus' death was what? Ripped. And uh, it was ripped from the top to the bottom. And that means now we can go to God how? Our own self, boldly. Okay, so verse 13, and it says, because all the firstborn are mine, all right, for in the day that I smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, I hollowed unto I, me. I'm working. Here, no, it's not even making sense. Me, miss, I'm missing every word. Let me mute him. All right, and it says, because all the firstborn are mine, uh, on the day that I smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, uh, I hollowed unto me all the firstborn of Israel. All right? And so God has hollowed unto us. All right? He has allowed us the opportunity to become uh, that uh, uh, Levite relationship person. We can become connected to him in the priesthood, just like Jesus is. He is our, our high priest, and the beauty of it is he's not only the high priest, he's also the, the offering himself. And that's the, uh, 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 the beauty of our walk with the Lord. All right? So he goes on in verse um, uh, uh, 14, and it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, saying, okay, once again, we're talking about what? Where the law exists. There's so much that was there. And in verse 15, the first word is, Number. He says, number the children of Levi after their houses. So now, just like, remember when we were going through the tribes and he kind of divided the tribes up and connected them together? Well, now he's going to do that with the Levites. He's going to divide the Levites by houses and connect them together and do what with them? The same thing he did with the children of Israel. He's going to put them on the north south, west, and east sides. Okay? All right, let's take a look. And so he says, number the children of, Israel, of, 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 of the Levites after their houses. And he says, and he goes on and says, every male from a month old and upwards. Now, when he was numbering the individuals to go to war, he was numbering them at what age? 20 years and older. All right? But now, from a standpoint of being able to minister as long as if he's a month old, then count him because he's worth the ability to be known. Who do we have? And what does that speak of? It speaks of the concept of when do you start training the Levite? You train him from a month old. What does the scripture tell us? Train up a child in the way he shall go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. So it speaks to us about the aspect that we should begin to give our children uh, uh, godly concepts early in life. All right? All right, so um, these are the portions here that are kind of repetitive, so we're going to hit the highlights, and each of these things are the same for each family group, and we're going to see that there's certain family groups on each side of the tabernacle. All right, so he talks first about the, uh, the, the, the Kohath and the Marari family. All right? All um, right? 
And then um, uh, uh, these are the four families. So it's the Aaron, Aaron and his family, the Gershites, the, the uh, Kohites, and the Maori. All right, so let's take a look at it. So um, he goes down to the, um, and we can go down to the where he picks it up at, at, at verse 23, because these are just things he's just going to, he's just going to keep uh, giving these names again. But at verse, verse 23, he gives us the structural aspects of where they're going to be. So in verse 23, it says, And the family of the, uh, of the Gershonites sh shall pitch behind the tabernacle. They're going to be uh, uh, at where the tabernacle is, and they're going to be where? So they're going to pitch by the tabernacle behind on the what? On the west side. Okay? So that's where they're. And, it says, and the chief of that house of the Gershonites is uh, Ella of uh, Fes, the son of uh, Lael. All right, and then in 25, it tells us what their charge is. And the charge of the son of the Gershonites and the tabernacle of the congregation shall be the tabernacle and the tent and the coverings. So what are they responsible for? All these outward things. You're going to have to deal with the tabernacle, the tent, and the coverings thereof, the hangings and the doors the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and the hangings of the court and the curtains and the door of the cabin, tabern, uh, uh, the door of the court, which shall be by the tabernacle and by the altars round about and the cords. Look at all the little detail. All right. All these little coverings, the tents, the hangings, the, the door, the cords, all of these things are important and somebody's responsible for it. You got to do your, well, my job is not that important. You better bring that cord. Right? Now, you, you go out and you try to do something. Well, you know, I'm going to go out and I'm going to do, I'm going to do carpentry work and everything. And you got, you know, you got all your power of tools. And today, all those power tools, they use what? The little batteries, right? And you bring all the tools, but you ain't got your battery. Well, you got everything you need, but you have no power. Because you left an item. Okay, well, the next day, you bring the battery, but you don't bring the tool. You still can't do any work. It's important for us to recognize that you have to make sure that you have each item. And so these individuals are responsible for these things which we just mentioned. All right? So, now it's important to keep in mind, those are the things that they were responsible for. All right? And then it gives them their number, and it tells them that there was like 8,000 of them. And, and, and the number, uh, we'll see, is important as, as well. Um, but um, it goes on, and it says in verse 27, And the Kohites, which is the family of the uh, Amronites, all right? And it says in verse uh, 28, And it says, In the number of all the males uh, of, of the month, there was 8,000 of them. All right, so that's... We're just repeating that. Let me move along. That's 28. Where am I trying to get to? 29. Okay, I'm sorry. Verse 29. And the family of the sons of Kohath shall pitch on the west, I'm sorry, on, on the side of the tabernacle southward. So, they're going to be on the south side. And the chief house of the father of the family of the Kohites shall be uh, uh, Ele Elizaphaz the son of, of Usurel. All right? And in verse 31, and excuse me for butchering these names, but look at verse 31. What is their charge? It says, And their charge shall be the ark, the table, the candlestick, the altar, the vessels of the sanctuary, wherein they minister, and the hangings and all the service thereof. Now, you look at these guys that are carrying, you know, they're pitching on the west side. They get to carry the Ark of the Covenant. They get to carry the, the, the show table, I mean, the showbread table and all the altars. They get to carry, they're not carrying the cords. But the other family that was carrying the cords, they're important too. And sometimes some people say, well, I'm carrying the most important stuff. Well, this stuff don't work if you don't have the curtains and the cords and the, and the doors. You still need all the stuff. So now, once again, you're called to a priesthood. You have a ministry, and God will tell you what you are responsible, what you are in charge to do. 
And you, that's why you got to what? Wait on your ministry, what it says here. All right? Uh, and so we see the uh, more repetitive things that are said. But if we go down to verse 35, and it says, And the chief of the house of the father of the families of Merai, and then it, it gives his name as Zuriel, the son of Ab, uh, 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 Hale, uh, Ab, Ab, Hale. These shall pitch on the side of the tabernacle northward. Okay, so now they're going to be on the north side. And under the, uh, uh, the, 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 the courtesy of the charge of the, 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 uh, the sons of Merai shall be the boards. What are they responsible for? The boards the, uh, of the tabernacle, the bars, the pillars, the sockets thereof, and all the vessels. So what are they in charge for? The framing. All right, so in other words, you're carrying the nuts and the bolts and the lumber. All right, because if you're going to have this, you still need to have that. So once again, to go back to my, my illustration of the carpenter. You got all your tools, you got all your cords, and you got all your, you know, electrical stuff that you need, but you don't have no material to build. You don't got no wood, no boards, no nothing. So you still need all that. You see how it's all ne of, of, of necessity. Okay, and that's something that we got to make sure that we do. All right, so in verse 38, once again, it brings us to um, those that are in the, that leadership aspect. Look at what it says. But those that encamp before the tabernacle towards the east. Remember, east is the side where the sun comes up, the rising of the sun. So anytime it's mentioned eastward, pay it a little bit of attention. It's like, okay, let me see. Let me just notice. What is it saying about those that are on the east? Well, let's take a look and see what it says about those that are on the east. Even before the tabernacle, the congregation eastward shall be Moses and Aaron. Oh, just so happens that Moses and Aaron are the, are, and, and his group are the ones that are, that are going to camp on the east side? No, it's not just so happens. That's where the leadership aspect, they're the ones that are getting the instructions. And you say, well, what does that mean? Okay, let's go back to my example. You got your cords, your electrical stuff, you got your batteries, you got your equipment, all right? And you got your important things. You got your tables and, and all that, and your band saws and all that stuff. And, and you got your lumber. You got your wood and everything. Okay, what are you building? Somebody's got to give you what? Some instructions as to what to build. Are you building a, 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 a kitchen cabinet? Are you building a living room so far, are you building a deck on the back of the house? You need to know what you're building. And that's the role of Aaron, Moses and Aaron. They're getting the what? The instructions. So it's not just the fact that you have the things. You got to know what to do with them. And that's an important part of our walk with the Lord. I got everything I need. Yeah, but do you know what you're doing? <laughs> There's a lot of people. They got, they got gifts and abilities and talents. But they're not, what, you, what are you building? What are you trying to do? And the thing that you have to keep in mind is sometimes you build small and sometimes you build big. Okay? So sometimes you're going to build, I, I'm going to just build a, a little drawer to put the silverware in. Real small. But sometimes you got to build a big garage to put the car in. Whichever one you're building, you got to still build it what? Properly. And you're going to need all the, the stuff that, uh, that's lying out there. All right. So um, let's read the, this aspect of verse 38. I think this one is worth reading through, even though some of it's repetitive. Let's read it again. But those that are encamped before the tabernacle towards the east, even before the tabernacle of the congregation eastward, shall be Moses and Aaron and his sons, keeping the charge of the sanctuary for the charge of the children of Israel. And the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. What does that mean? If you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, you won't make it. All right. So what are we looking at here? Your name has to be called and then you got to be where you're supposed to be. I want to go uh, and... Uh, we're going to finish this up real in just a bit here. We only have a little bit more to go. 
But I want to take a quick little detour and I want to go to the book of Revelation. And I'm going to look at chapter 20. And we're going to start right at about, we, I could read that whole chapter, but that, then, we, then we won't get back to this. But let's go to chapter 20 and kind of go right to the middle. And we're going to go to um, verse 11. All right, so we're going to look at uh, Revelation chapter 20, verse 11. And um, I just want to point out a couple of things about these names and about, you know, are you at the right place or are you at the place where you don't want to be? Now, I just want to highlight this. The people that are listed here, this is the great white throne judgment. You do not want to be at the great white throne judgment. If you're at the great white throne judgment, that means that you didn't make it because you did not judge yourself. So remember, Jesus said, I didn't come for the well, but for the sick. You didn't describe yourself and judge yourself as being sick, sin sick, and needing Jesus. You were saying, I don't need a physician. Well, if you don't feel you need the great physician, you're going to end up here. And let's look at what it says. Revelation chapter 20, verse 11. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away. Why? Because this is the face of judgment. He's about to give everybody exactly what they deserve. If you're here, it goes on. It says, and there was found no place for them. So all those people that were there, no place in God's kingdom was found for them. Why? Let's keep reading. Verse 12. And I saw the dead, great, small and great, stand before God. And look at this. And the books were open. All the little details that you and I, when our book is open, what, what did God see? He saw the work of Christ in us. It had our name on the cover, but inside our book had what? The works of Jesus. When God opens their book, he's going to see their works. It's got their name on it and their works. Our book has our name on it and Jesus' works. That's the beauty. All right? So he said, I saw, uh, I saw the, uh, the small and great stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. The dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books. You see that? You're going to be judged out of everything that was written in those books if you're here. And you're not going to do well because the only way you can make it in eternity is if you have perfect righteousness. And that's what the Lord Jesus gives us. He makes our book perfect. Our name's on the cover. His work is on the inside. All right? And, it's, and, and, it, and it says, uh, and the, let me go back and read this. It says, those things which were written in the books according to their works. You see that? What's in there? Their works. Look at verse 13. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were all they, they were they were judged every man according to their works. You see that? Look at verse 14. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Which we don't have to have. Because if you have, if you're born again, you won't have the second death. It's important on the man wants to die. But if you die twice. You're not, you're, not, you're not making it in. Verse 15. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now, what does that speak of? It speaks to us as being able to find ourselves in the will of God, in the work of God. And that's what this here is. These, these Levites we're all told you have a task to do and you have a side to stand on and you have to 
understand your task and to and to move to it. Now, we that are are, are are blessed to be able to understand and to recognize what Jesus has done, what task do we have to do to believe on him whom God has sent? That's the only task we got to do. You ain't got to worry about no cords. You don't got to worry about bringing no boards. All you got to do is make sure you got where? Jesus in your heart. And then he will instruct you in your ministry and what you need to do. But your eternity is in the hands of Jesus. Now, will you be judged on anything? Yes, you're going to be judged on how faithful you were to the things that were given to you. Did you use what you, God has given you? Did you use the, the or did you bury it? And so we talked. We, we, could, we could talk a lot about those things which were buried. All right, but if, but uh, if your name is not there, you were cast out. And so um, it said here that anyone that came nigh unto these things that God had had ordained for the Levites, and they weren't a chosen Levite, they were to be put to death. All right, now. In this last portion here, it talks about, it says, And the Lord said unto Moses, it says, Number all the firstborn male. So he's telling them to number all the firstborn because the firstborn of all the, the, the uh, 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 that were born into Israel belonged to who? Belonged to God. So, but what God's saying, um, let's go down to verse uh, uh, 43. Look at what he's saying about this firstborn. He says, and all the firstborn males by the number of names from the uh, month old and upward of those that were numbered of them were uh, 20 and 2,203 score and 13. And look what the Lord says, verse 44. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, take the Levites instead of all the firstborn among the children of Israel. So, what does that mean? The firstborn of anybody born in Israel belong to God. So, what God is saying is, I'm going to make an exchange. I'm going to allow your child, if you are a Reubenite or, or from Judah or from Dan or from Manasseh, your firstborn child can stay with you. You don't have to send them out off to do the work of the Lord. You can keep them there in your own house because I'm going to have a Levite go in their stead. The Levites will be, I'm going to take a tribe instead of every one of the firstborns. Now, that whole instead of concept and philosophy applies to us in so many different ways. Why? Because Jesus suffered the, 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 the sting of death Instead of us, I'm talking about the death of sin. He took it instead of us. He's the one that is the, the, the one that had to uh, have the father turn his back. The father will not turn his back on us. He took it instead. We are the ones who are supposed to get it, but Jesus is the one that got it in our stead. Well, that's what that whole concept and the nature of the Levites I'm going to take them instead of taking all the firstborn children of every tribe. All right. So that instead concept is pictured here. Um, and, um, you know, it's something that we, we look at and we go, wow. Our last portion here talks to us about the, um, the value. And let's, uh, let's, let's, let's go ahead and take a look at this and then we'll, we'll be done. Um, it says uh, in verse 40, let's see, we want to go where to 46, 47. It says, thou shalt even take five shekels of peace by the pole after the shekel of the sanctuary, shall thou take them. Now, what is he talking about? For any overage or unbalanced, so how many firstborns you have versus how many Levites you have, the difference is to be made up by money, by the shekel. And so it says uh, in verse 48, And thou shalt give money wherewith the odd number of them is to be redeemed unto Aaron and his sons. 
All right. So if there's an odd number, the number it doesn't match, the number is not 100% even, then you make the adjustment by payment. Now, what does that mean? It means that the books have to be balanced. You have to balance the books. And that's what God is saying. He's going to balance everything. Your life may seem chaotic and out of balance, but God's like, no, it's going to be in balance. And when it's all said and done, those that belong to the Lord will find that everything that they needed to be paid off, because what? The wages of sin is what? Death. And so, therefore, if you have an unbalanced balance sheet, you owe. And you don't want to owe. You want to make sure that every aspect of your uh, 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 relationship with the Lord has paid your bill completely. Well, you know what? We don't have to worry about it. Now, back in Moses' day, they had to go out and get the number, find out how many we got, how many Levites, what's the difference, get the shekels, let's balance the sheets. I'm so happy we don't have to do any of that. All we got to do is, I know Jesus, and he's already balanced my account. I'm in good standing with the Lord, and we can be okay with that. All right? And so in, uh, it closes here with, in verse 50. It says, Of the firstborn of the children of Israel took he the money, a thousand and uh, three hundred and three score and five shekels after the shekel of a sanctuary. And Moses gave the money unto them that were redeemed unto Aaron and, and to his sons according to the word of the Lord as the Lord commanded Moses. All right. So there it is. Once again, we're just dealing with the behind the scenes, uh, uh, the, the, the understanding of how things work. The Lord's pointing out to us that there is value, there is responsibility, there's a side that you need to be focused on, there are things that you need to, be, need to have done. But the ultimate thing to keep in mind is that the Lord has allowed you to be born as a spiritual Levite. That means you are a priest. You have been clothed in his righteousness. Your book has been filled with his deeds and not your own deeds. And you will stand before God fully justified with your balance paid in full. You owe the world, the devil, and the flesh nothing. Because if you owe, they're going to say, come back here. You owe me. But thank God that's not going to happen with us. All right. So that's uh, uh, chapter 3. And um, as I said, I just tried to bring out some of these things that I think are, 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 are unique about this chapter. Uh, but there's still a lot in here that, that uh, I'm sure we could talk about. But I think we hit the high points. Uh, is, are there any other comments or questions about our chapter here?